When we started trying to actually make a profit in our first furniture business, we were hesitating to sell anything for profit because we were afraid of pricing. We were making price our unsolvable monster and it was keeping us from making sales. Until finally, we got some really good advice from a friend and we snapped out of it and jumped into sales head first, even though we had some unanswered questions about pricing. How we did that and how we price our work now is the topic of today's episode of Maker's Money. So when I was in high school, I was a lifeguard at the local swimming pools during the summer. One of the pools that I worked at, they had two diving boards. They had the low dive and then they had the high dive. How high is it? I don't actually know. Yeah, so about 10 feet, nine feet, 10 inches. I wasn't super adventurous with tricks and stuff like some of my friends were, but I always wanted to do a gainer, you know, where you like run forwards, but you do a back flip off of the, the high dive. I wasted three months one summer. I, the, almost the entire summer trying to think about doing a gainer. I like measured the length of the board and like marked out my footsteps on the way to the end. All sorts of crazy, crazy stuff just to do a simple trick off the diving board. One of the other lifeguards, he knew that I wasn't gonna pull it off. So I bet him, I bet him my entire paycheck that I could pull it off first try. We shook on it and I climbed the ladder of the high dive. I took a few deep breaths and I ran forward and the rest, I don't remember. It's all kind of a blur. According to those that saw what happened, I like over rotated. My head like slammed into the water. Apparently I swim back to the side, got out of the pool, immediately fell over. And the next thing I remember was staring up at the sun while everybody else was crowded over me asking if I was okay. I was so confident in my homework and all of the things that I had thought through that I never even once considered trying it or doing a back dive to test it out. I just thought that I could think my way through doing it. All I had to show for it was a minor concussion and no paycheck. Now, not everybody at the swimming pool was as cocky as me. Most of the people that got stuck on the high dive were usually little kids that climbed all the way to the top and they started thinking about it. And that's where things went wrong. They were thinking hard about their life choices. But if you ask them, they're still planning on jumping off, even though everybody knows that it's just not gonna happen. They get so sucked into thinking about the complexity of what it means to jump off of the high dive that they never commit to trying. Smart, intelligent, curious, problem-solving people act like this in business. They can't turn off that part of their brain that asks, what if, or what about this? And they just get in this like downward spiral of thinking about small little details that while important are not important at that moment when it comes to making sales or whatever it is your business needs from you at that moment. They get passed up and put out of business by the people that are too stupid to think about those things. They're just out there selling fast as they can build it. Intelligence is not a requirement for wealth, at least not in this country. You can either spend your time doing accounting or you can spend your time making money. So if you want to make money, you need a formula that takes care of you, but also doesn't make you think about 8 million things. A good pricing structure takes into account a few things, materials, labor, shop costs, and profit. That's it. But you forgot about taxes. But you forgot about taxes. Stop, you're overthinking it. We'll talk about taxes later. You're gonna be fine. Accounting is important, like eating lunch or, or taking a break from the sun, but it's not the thing to think about when you're standing on the diving board because that's just gonna slow you down. That brings us to the ultimate pricing formula. Love, 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 love. Now, clickbait aside, there's a lot of ways to do a pricing formula, but the most important thing is that you pick one and stick with it. You need to get some practice doing it. So this is our pricing formula for beginners. You should not be charging any lower than the numbers that this formula gives you. If you shortchange yourself on this formula, you will be losing money on your sales. And that's not running a business, that's called running a charity. All right, so here it is. Here is our magic ultimate pricing formula. Let me walk you through it. First, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your material costs and your labor costs for whatever you're building, add them together, and then multiply that by what we call the magic multiplier. We'll get there in a second. And then after you do that, 
you're gonna have your final sale price. So let's break this down. What is your material cost? That is everything that you buy that is going to the customer. So that's your lumber, that's nail, glues, finish, anything that is physically going from your shop into the customer's hands or home or whatever. What that is not is that's not taking into account like tool wear and tear, that's not consumables or anything like that. That is physically what you are purchasing that will end up in your customer's home. Or you will use it and throw it away after finishing this piece. If you do a live edge epoxy river table, that form for the epoxy is in your material cost. So if it is an item being used specifically for this project, or it's something that's going directly to the customer, that is the material cost. And next is labor cost. You should be getting paid for your time. I know you enjoy doing this work, but joy is not a form of payment. You should be compensated for the time you spend building a project. This is time that you are spending working. This is time that you're not spending with your family or doing any of your hobbies or working around your own house. We recommend at a bare minimum, you start with $30 an hour. We see far too many people not paying themselves for labor and that's how they're losing money on jobs. That's how they're getting frustrated with woodworking. They're not enjoying it as much. They're getting burnt out because they're not being compensated for the physical work that they're putting into each piece. Sometimes you don't exactly know how many hours it's gonna take you to do a project, but maybe you can calculate it in the form of days. Some people figure out labor costs with a daily rate. So maybe you know it's gonna take you three Saturdays to build this project. Well three Saturdays, eight hour workdays times $30 an hour is a $250 daily rate. So that's another way to calculate it. Whatever is easiest for you, that's just another way to calculate all of your labor costs. So put the total labor costs for the project in this spot right here. And next is the fun part. This is the magic multiplier. We call it the magic multiplier because this is where all the what ifs get accounted for. This is where you take into account things like tool wear and tear, the electric cost in your shop, consumables. All of your shop costs are wrapped up in here. You don't even have to worry about it. You can just focus on selling your work and use this magic multiplier number right here and it'll all be taken care of. Also, your profit is in your magic multiplier. This is the money that you're making on top of your labor costs so that you have money to reinvest in the next project because your business needs to be making money too. If you hired somebody to do this job, you'd have the material costs and you'd pay them the labor costs and then your business isn't left with any money. Again, we're not running charities, we're running businesses. Your business has gotta make money to grow and keep moving. And we recommend you start with a magic multiplier of 1.5. Let's say I have a customer that wants to buy a coffee table. So we agree on a design and I take my best guess at what I think the material costs are gonna be and it comes to $150. You also estimate that you can build it in two Saturdays. So based on the daily rate we talked about earlier, that's $500 for labor costs. And then multiply it by our magic multiplier of 1.5. And that comes to a final price of $975. Now I know about half of you watching just about had a brain aneurysm. $975 for a coffee table? There's no way I can charge that. And that, my friends, is just fear. It either comes from a lack of confidence or a lack of sales ability, but it's not because anything's wrong with the formula. If you charge any less than that, you're not making money and neither is your business. So you're gonna hate this formula at first. You're gonna think there is no way that I can charge that much. You're gonna start justifying a lower price or a lower labor rate and it's gonna be super uncomfortable. You're gonna wanna go argue with us down in the comments about how you could never sell that to anybody. But just like push-ups, it's gonna be kind of painful and uncomfortable the first time you do them. There is no formula that will boost your confidence, magically give you sales abilities, and give your business a profit. Now, if this price is actually a little too high, you either need to build it faster or find a new customer. So the great part about this formula is that it grows with you. Over time, you can increase your magic multiplier to pay for things like saving up for another tool, or you can start to pay employees and bring your labor costs down. You're also gonna realize that if you batch products out, you can usually build multiple items with lower labor costs. Depending on the article you read online, most furniture stores have a two to 400% markup. That means that their magic multiplier using this formula is probably two or three or four. 
and we're just saying start with 1.5. So over time, as you get better systems and better procedures, you can start to raise your magic multiplier because you're doing it more efficiently. So the business is making even more profit. But this is just where we recommend everybody starts and you will cover all four of your bases. You will not lose money on every job. And this formula you can take with you as your business gets better. The power in this formula is incredible. It's rigid enough that beginners can use it with confidence, but flexible enough that it can change and grow with you as your business grows. And now you've just got to get the confidence to get out there and make sales. Learn about yourself, learn about your strengths and, and your weaknesses. Just like what happened with us, your mentors are going to be able to point things out that you can't even see about yourself. But how do you know what you don't know? How can you find somebody to give you honest feedback? How do you see yourself from an outside perspective? And how do you deal with getting contradicting advice? That's the topic of the next Maker's Money video. So subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when it comes out.